let us quickly review some of the concepts that we've discussed in this session. We can manage data elements in DHIS2 by accessing the data element management application. Here we can add new data elements, data element groups, and data element group sets. When we create data elements, we have to at minimum assign the data element a name, a short name, a domain type, a value type, and an aggregation type. In our examples, we left the category combination as none. After we have entered in the information for those fields, we can click on Save. This will then save the data element within DHIS2. After we have created all of our data elements, we can group them together through data element groups. This allows you to take your data elements and group them together by thematic area. When we create data element groups, we have to assign the group a name. Then we will select the various data elements that are associated with the data element group that we are creating. Lastly, we take the data element groups that we have created and create data element group sets. When we create these, we assign them a name, define whether they're compulsory or a data dimension. These two fields, compulsory and data dimension, represent quite different concepts. The compulsory field denotes that all data elements must belong to the data element groups that are within the data element group set. Data dimension, on the other hand, allows us to use this data element group set for analysis later on. After we define those parameters, we select the data element groups that we want to be part of this group set. We then click on Save, which will allow us to save the data element group set. This ends the session on data elements. Please give the exercise on creating data elements, groups, and group sets a try. Let us know if you have any questions about the concepts that we have discussed in this particular demonstration. In the next session, we will move on and discuss the various data collection options that are available within DHIS2.